We live in a world where digital is becoming more valuable to us. What is a bigger flex? Is it a $80,000 car or an $80,000 profile picture on Twitter that the whole world can see? It's about being a part of an exclusive club that owns Banksy. Now, what if Banksy himself was in there talking about his art? And then Bored Apes is a cool story. They nailed perfectly the market because what is an ape? No research, your friend says, buy this, and you're like, you're buying before you're even asking what you bought. Then you're like, what did I buy? Hi guys, and welcome back to The Game Changer. As you know, the goal of this show to bring inspiring and chill conversations about crypto space, gaming, and NFTs. I'm super excited today to introduce you to our guest, Tim Juice. Tim is founder of Coin Games and also his NFT advisor for Cityfy. Stay tuned and watch until the end. I'm sure you will get tons of valuable information about NFT space. Hi, Tim. Hi, welcome. How's it going? Thank you. Good, very well. How are you doing? I'm actually amazing. Um, I'm back home for the first time in about five weeks. I've been on the road working, traveling, uh, meeting with my, I was just in Seattle, meeting with the other founders of Coin Games, kind of planning out the, the roadmap for our development of our, uh, you know, Supercell style blockchain game, which has been super exciting. And we're really close to some amazing announcements there. And, uh, but yeah, I'm doing awesome. It's great to be home. In sleeping in my own bed for the first time in five weeks and uh, got a good night's rest, so I feel great. Nice, nice. I actually already briefly introduced you to my audience. Um, yeah. So I said that you're founder of Coin Games and your advisor for Cityfy. Correct me if I'm wrong. So could you please tell us more about yourself and actually how and when you entered crypto space? Yeah, I would love to. So uh, my introduction to crypto was actually in 2017 during the initial like bull run. I had a friend that said, hey, bro, I bought this thing called Bitcoin. Um, you need to buy one. They're $10,000. And I was like, what am I buying? And he's like, just trust me. This is like the new digital gold. He's like, I'll help you. So he leads me through. I buy one. And then I'm like, I find out that there's Ethereum and Litecoin and all these other crazy coins, half of which are dead right now and don't even exist. And uh, I then got into basically the casino of crypto where every day you were making bets on different altcoins and they were running or not running. Or, and I, I went through everything. I lost coins and hacks on exchanges that disappeared um, like Cryptopia. And um, I had coins I couldn't withdraw from certain exchanges that I still have never got to today. But in uh, 2020, I started trading again. And um, I got back into um, over trading and started losing money. And I kind of was like, all right, I give up. I'm not going to trade tokens. I'm just going to invest in projects I believe in. And um, it was right around that time that I read the article about Beeple selling the $69 million NFT. And I remember like that was such an insane amount of money. Like who, who spends $70 million on one item? And then what was confusing to me is I didn't even know what they had purchased. Like, what did they buy for $70 million? And um, to me, that was just incredible. And so I started reading about NFT technology, trying to understand what they even owned and how, how do they say they own this picture that I can see in this article that I can save into my phone? How do you own that? And anyway, so when I went down that rabbit hole, at some point, this big light bulb went off. And as you can see, I'm a big Star Wars fan and I'm quite a big gamer. I played a lot of um, World of Warcraft was probably the game I spent the most uh, biggest part of my life in. And I immediately thought of World of Warcraft on blockchain. And I imagined, you know, the items that I owned and even some of the the just the flex items that I owned that were really hard to get that had no like benefit in the game, but they just they were very limited. And I remember thinking if that was a blockchain item, that would probably still have value today because there's all these players still playing that game and that item is never being released again. So I thought of that and then I thought about the little in-game gold that I used to like work hard to try to get um, on, these, uh, on, these, uh, on the auction house by flipping and selling things and creating, anyway, creating an economy. And that could be a real ERC-20 token that if I have a lot of time on my hands, I could 
um, spend time getting the gold and I could sell it to another player who doesn't have a lot of time on his hands, but he has money. And so to me, this, this, it was like a defining moment in my life, which has then led to the last year and a half in the space and starting coin games and all that, which was that if players can, can earn a token where they can at least play more um, and not have to put as much money in or even make money. Um, but then on top of that, they can own their own assets. That's a better user experience and player experience for the gamer. So in the end, if it's better for the end user, it will always win. If you look at any industry, look at like Uber, right? Uber is a better version of a taxi for the consumer, you and me. And so it's just better, uh, it wins in the end. It finds a way to win, even if no one wants it to win. Um, and so um, we're gonna be making a series of games under one IP, almost like Clash, where the games will have the same characters and you can carry your NFTs throughout. And um, yeah, so we've got some really cool stuff in the works um, for coin games. And so that's kind of my full-time responsibility. And then, and I love Web3. I think it's the future of a lot of things. And um, I'm happy to have my little space in it to get to meet cool people like you guys and do fun stuff together. So yeah. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Actually, like nowadays, more and more people moving from web 2 to web 3 that's amazing we're getting more people here that's nice but yeah there's a lot of talented people coming in so yeah uh so could you please tell us what is nft maybe like some of my audience they don't really know what is it or they just started into crypto space they don't really understand like how it works what is it because you know some people still think that it's just a picture so could you please explain what is nft or maybe you can share some history of the nft yeah, that's a great one. So NFTs are obviously, you know, they stand for non-fungible tokens. So like tech, the technical term is that it's a line of code that's unique that can move around the blockchain. So we all know, we'll just use Doge as an example. A non-fungible token would be if, if you could track an individual Doge coin around the internet. And so that's what non-fungible tokens are. So they essentially said, even within a collection of a billion tokens, in one collection in theory, you can still kind of print them out of thin air by creating a simple contract. Each of those tokens are unique. They're associated with the bigger collection, but they have their own uh, code. So why is that important? Well, think about digital art for a second. There are real people out there who make a career in digital art. They take great photos, they create you know, art on an iPad. I recently started, uh, got my iPad and started teaching myself uh, pixel design because I have an idea oh, for- really? Uh, yeah, just just uh, uh, like an alternate to a crypto punk, and it's gonna be free. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, there's gonna be no money involved, but uh, I've got a, a fun idea around around that. So, like, let's say as a you know budding digital artist myself, if I want to release that in the past, what do I do? Just put it up on a website and people save it. So there was no there was no like physical place a digital photo could really reside until NFTs, you bring NFTs and the technology of NFTs comes together. And now this photo can move around on this, on the blockchain. So it can now have a physical property, meaning it can be owned, traded, uh, sold, you know, verified, um, valued, all of those things can happen with this digital image. And we, we live in a world where digital is becoming more valuable to us. Like we, there are many people who, who, uh, who actually put more effort and time into their digital um, uh, identity than they do their, their natural identity. They, they, they make their whole life revolve around how they're being seen in the digital world, whether on Twitter or whatever. So that's the basis of it from art. You can also do music. And like we talked about, you could do game assets where literally the game asset is now tied to the NFT. So I can say I own that. Like we can say it's a picture. We can say that someone, um, I've heard people say, well, I can just right click and save you the, the picture you have, but when you, screenshot. can you sell that? Can you, can you sell that screenshot? No, you can't. You can save the picture of the board ape, but you don't own the board ape. So when it comes time to sell it, you can't sell your picture, but the other guy can because it's on the blockchain and we know that we know exactly where it is. So imagine, um, imagine, you know, Banksy, right? One of the most famous artists, right? So let's say, why do people buy a Banksy, right? There's, there's a story behind that art. And I'll get into the story behind Bored Apes and CryptoPunks in a second, but this is a good <laughs> intro to that. So 
imagine Banksy and you've got Banksy releasing a piece of art. People buy that because of who he is. You know, his art, it might cost in materials a few thousand dollars to produce it or maybe 10 or 20,000 even if he does some weird stuff. But how much do people buy that for? Millions. So why? What's all, what's all the difference between the 20 grand it costs and the million it sells for? It's the story of Banksy of what it means to own one. It's about being a part of an exclusive club that owns Banksy's. Now, what if, what if you bought a Banksy and you got to go into a text group with other people who own Banksy's? And what if you got to be in a discord with other owners? And what if Banksy himself was in there talking about his art and you're part of that group? Um, that would be something special. And that's what NFTs offers. It's D digital art, which is art. I mean, you can't say digital art is not art. Artists are producing art that's digital all day long. Digital art that you can make physical and it has value and it's the story and the, the prestige and everything behind it, but it's also a private club that you get access to. So it's combining things that we love in this world, private clubs, exclusive memberships, finding your tribe, your group of people, all centered around this PFP. Now, why have PFPs blown up? Well, people right now, at least in NFTs, they want to have that digital identity because it's the digital identity on Twitter. You're finding your group of people. And so if you think about the different collections, we'll start with CryptoPunks, but CryptoPunks were like the first really big PFP actually. And so they were on chain, meaning that they stored the data in the blockchain. So they're not stored on a server like cool cats or, or bored apes or any of that. Um, they were the first 10,000 collection. They were free um, and they gave that all out. You, you had ownership over your CryptoPunk, all that. And, but they were also a private club because people started getting in and it was kind of the OG, it was OG status in crypto and in NFTs to have that as your profile. Plus people didn't want to reveal their identity sometimes. So they use that instead. So it's all of those, uh, it's a valuable asset. It has a story behind it. It was free. It was the first 10K, the first on chain, the first randomly generated um, like PFP. All of those things combined into the story. And so it's historic, you know, that's why, you know, Sotheby's bought CryptoPunks. Um, and so that was the first one. And then Bored Apes is a cool story because Bored Apes was almost like the new money, the new school uh, PFP uh, project where they updated the art. But if you think about it, they nailed perfectly the market because what is an ape? An ape in crypto is someone who doesn't really do much research and he just apes into a coin, which hopefully we're going to get right. back to the time where we can do that soon, right? Um, with the market going Sounds up. Sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, right? So yeah, no research. Your friend says, buy this. And you're like, you're buying right. before you're even asking what you bought. Then you're like, what did I buy? And they're like, oh, you, you know, you bought this or that. So that's an ape. So what's a board ape? A board ape is like what we've been in the market lately. I'm sitting here with my ETH on the sidelines and I'm just itching to buy something, but I'm bored. There's nothing worth buying. So I'm an ape and I'm bored. And then obviously Yacht Club is like a place where rich people hang out. So now you put that together, board, ape, Yacht Club, and you have the perfect name. And when did it come out? It came out during the decline from 60,000 down to like 30 in Bitcoin. So all the apes were bored. And so they found their new money club. So you had the crypto punks and many of those guys bought Bored Apes. And then there was kind of this war between old money and new money. And so that was Bored Ape in the beginning. Now, obviously, it's become so much more than that with a game and everything else they're doing. But that was the beginning origins. And then Cool Cats were kind of the next one. Um, and, then, you know, there's some other obviously projects in there, but Cool Cats was the next big one. Um, and then now you've got groups like Proof Collective, you know, with Moonbirds that basically that's a group of amazing entrepreneurs that have dominated the web two tech space and now they're coming into web three. So they're attracting business people. You've got Azuki and Clone X that are attracting kind of like the streetwear art groups. And so world of women, you know, if you're a, a, a lady in, or, or a man, but mostly a lady and you want to be in crypto and in, and in the NFT space and you want a proper NFT face to show that world of women is your spot. Right. And so, each of these collections, the ones that do well, they find their own identity and they broadcast that out. If you want to be, if you want to join this group, come be a part of it. So for Coin Games, I have an NFT collection called the Coin Games Dev Squad. If you want to help us develop games and be and have a say in 
the lore, the backstories to the characters, what the characters look like, their weapons, their colors, all those things. We literally are opening up the curtain or the kitchen and saying, come on in and cook a game with us. We've got professionals, they know what they're doing, but we wanna give you a back behind the scenes look. You buy an NFT in my collection, you get early access to all our assets, but, and beta and all that, but you also get a say in building the collection. And that's why we've got, even in this down market, we only have 96 NFTs for sale on the on the secondary market out of over 5,000 for, for Dev Squad. But we're a very niche. Not everyone wants to go build a video game with a team. So if you do, you just buy ours. If you if you want, you know, if you want to be a part of a, uh, you know, uh, what Gary V is building, you buy, you know, you get V friends and you get cool collectibles and, oh, and you his have NFTs, one? right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and so um, anyway, so yeah, so that that's NFTs in a nutshell. It's it's a private community. It's collecting art. It's a flex. It's um, it's being a part of a digital revolution. And we're we're very early and this most projects. I will say this. Most projects are going to go to zero because they don't have good teams. They don't have real builders. They don't have people behind them that are in it for the long haul. But when you find the right ones, we're, on, we're in something very special. And I think we're gonna have ups and downs. I predict that we're gonna have another big run um, in the next year and a year and a half in NFTs, huge one. And I actually think it'll be set off by good games, believe it or not. I think the next wave is gonna be real utility where you, get, you own an asset and it gets used inside of a game world. And I think people are gonna really like that. But yeah, so yeah, it's exciting. NFTs are awesome. Nice, nice. So for example, as you're saying that, if I want to buy my first NFT, I should look at something what I like, what kind of people I want to surround myself. Where should I look for this information? Yeah, so it really, like, really how, you need to get... Where it, should I start yeah. with? How to find NFT? Yeah, I mean, so tw so Twitter obviously is where you get... I get a lot of information about new projects. So that would be the first place is get on Twitter um, and start following people and then follow the people they follow and follow the people they follow and start to just look and listen. Um, you know, there, there, you, you can also get into some discords, um, pretty inexpensively, um, where, or, or for free even, and just start asking questions. This is the type of community I want to be around. What should I do? And, 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 uh, you know, go follow some of the biggest collections. If you go on like rarity tools, go look at the biggest 20 collections and look at the art, read, uh, their website and then start to figure out which ones are a good one to join. If you join one of the OG collections that's held its value, most collections have an alpha group. So even like the Coin Games Dev Squad, even though we're about video games and building a video game, if you like that, you can obviously start there. But you, there, we, in our group, we have an alpha group that just talks about other NFT projects. And that's where I even learned a ton about what's upcoming, what's a good project to join, where have you got the most value, um, so that's that's probably the main thing is just you got to join one. Nice, nice. But I did my research on alpha communities and I would say they are pretty expensive. Like, is it really that valuable? Do they like give some kind of secrets how to become a millionaire from the NFTs? <laughs> no, you know, um, alpha communities. So the private like dedicated alpha communities can be expensive. Like Crypto Girl is one that I'm in. Um, and I pay, I think, $300 a month to be a part of it. And, uh, but for me, I get enough value out of it because um, of a couple of things. One, it's a community. It's people talking and learning and growing together. Two, and I enjoy that. Two, you usually get on whitelists as part of it. So ideally, especially in the bull market, we were getting on private whitelists that would pay for the membership itself. So we kind of broke even. So you're part of it, you're learning, but you're making, right. you might even be making money. Um, right now in the bear market, I would not say that most of them are worth the price, unless the prices have come down a lot. Um, there are other ones out there. I only know Crypto Gorillas, and he only has a space for 100 members, and you pay monthly. So I'm a, obviously biased. He's a friend of mine. I'm a fan of that, his. Um, but there are alpha communities in almost any big community. So just to be clear, oh, another one's Quirkies. Quirkies is phenomenal. Quirkies is a great one to be a part of. And Quirkies, I believe you can join that by buying their secondary NFT, um, which is only about 0.3. So that's pretty cheap. That's a one-time 0.3, uh, a third of an ETH, and you can get in 
and be a part of it. I'm a big fan of Quirkies. I think they're doing something really good. Again, I would, I would definitely say, um, you know, Timmy Ham's community, Chilled Sloths, keep an eye out for that one. That one's going to be the cheapest one you can get into and the most value. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to be with them forever. So I'm in that group. You'll have access to me, Timmy, and a bunch of other people. But um, that one launches in about six to seven weeks. But you'll be able to buy into that for basically the, the cheapest out of all of these. But yeah, I do think they're okay, worth it. Okay, I'm making sure. notes. Yeah. Uh, one more question. What do you think of meme NFTs? So I don't think those meme NFTs have any kind of communities or is it community about memes? They, they, so, so some of it's them, just a hype. No. Yeah. Most of them are hype. You have to ask yourself, do I want to own this for five years? The NFT space in general is um, uh, filled with a lot of stuff and a lot of it is cash grabs. And especially the meme-based ones are definitely very, very, very cash grabby. And there are a few memes that have successfully survived. Like, uh, uh, man, Wrecked Guy is kind of, uh, in a way, a meme-based one. And that has a real artist behind it. And that one's pretty cool. But yeah, I would say most of the meme ones, it's not a bad play if you like to gamble, buy something and then try to flip it. But... For the most part, you're just, you're gambling at that point. Yeah, to me, those are not real right. long-term. Um, tell me, please, the best projects, the best NFT projects that you believe in that you think they're going to still survive in the market for next three years, let's say, three to five. Okay, and again, there's no, this is just my opinion, so not financial advice, as I'm supposed <laughs> to make that disclaimer. But um, yeah, so if you were investing at the very top of the tier, not going anywhere, is Punk's and board apes. Those two are quite amazing. Um, now, are they worth the money right now? I don't know. Could they go lower? Definitely, potentially. But they're at this point, they are the top two. Like, and I think I, I, I would find it hard to believe anyone dethroning them. Now, there's a lot of people who think Azuki, Clonex, Moonbirds could eventually pass those guys. And, and obviously, it is anyone's game. Uh, in 10 years, in 10 years, everything is going to be considered vintage and original from these first year and a half. Um, and so, but that being said, yeah, so that's it. In my mind, if I was spending some big money, it would be, it'd probably be, uh, I'd actually probably go in the direction of Moonbirds before Punks and Board Ape, only because Moonbirds has more runway in front of them. And uh, I could see some big stuff there. And the, uh, so that would be my top tier personally, but board apes and punks are great. Uh, below them, uh, in like the 15 ETH stuff, Doodles, I think is a strong one. I think Clone X is a strong one too. Azuki would be my third one there. If you love the idea of Web3 giving back and doing good for people, on-chain monkeys is your place. If you wanna get in around people that wanna donate money, want to do good in the world, want to give back. They're partnered with a lot of big things. That's called on-chain monkeys. And they have a new NFT that's about uh, 0.4 of an ETH, I think. And um, it's called Karma. And that's a good one to look into for sure. Um, in the gaming side, I think Alluvium is interesting. I think other side meta from, um, you know, other side from Yuga Labs is interesting. Uh, Treeverse, I think, is going to be good in Everseed, but I don't know, you know, their assets. Um, you can check those out. And then, obviously, I'm obviously biased. I think that Dev Squad is one of the most undervalued NFTs in the space since we have about 10 months worth of announcements that we've not made behind the scenes because of some reasons. Um, but we're about to make all of them real soon. So, Dev Squad, uh, Coin Games Dev Squad, my own, and obviously Chilled Sloth. There's there's um a, there's a, a couple upcoming projects. So Collider is if you're into gaming, you should check out Collider Craftworks. They're quite amazing. Their quality is incredible. They're one of the best uh, web two um, uh, like game art studios you've ever seen. And they that studio their web three arm is called Collider. And um, they've got some big stuff in the works and their stuff's amazing. If you're into gaming, they have a game that's in beta right now that you can play called The Mosh Pit and it's good. Um, and then uh, in the same area, the last one I would say, another one to look out for, but it's gonna be hard to get involved, is called Bad Influence. Uh, these guys are totally under the radar, but the founders are the real deal. They're doxxed. Um, one of them worked with Lego and created some of their, their IPs like Ninjago, Another one sold his company for a oh, wow. billion dollars. 
uh, with a couple friends and he's more excited about what he's building now than the company he sold for a billion dollars. And so these guys are going to be in the space for the next 10 years. They actually just announced or are about to announce, so hopefully I'm not spilling the beans, a, a new way that they're going to roll out their 10K collection where they're doing a portion of it now with their whitelist partners and um, and uh, some other stuff and partnerships with other communities. Most of that's already spoken for, so you're gonna maybe have to buy on secondary if you didn't know about them and you weren't already in. And then they're gonna release the next, like they're gonna do about 4,000 and they're gonna release the next 6,000 over the next eight years, one auction per day. And um, and they're connected into Hollywood and they're, they're bringing a different, they're bringing basically be a bad influence for good and bringing something um, different to the world of, um, uh, you know, like cre creativity. Um, I've got nothing else really on my radar coming up that's very exciting. Everything kind of paused when the bear market hit. So, but bad influence, chilled sloths, check those out. Um, and that's it. Tim, thank you. Thank you so much for yeah, super knowledgeable information. That's like, wow. Yeah, you're welcome. I was making... I'll, uh, anytime you want to chat about the market, I'll come back on here. Maybe we should do some segments just on gaming, just on, just on hype sure. community. Um, yeah, but this is fun. Thank you for having me on. Sure, sure. That's a great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And I, I will see you again. Yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks.